Hey guys, one of the least enjoyable things that I have to do as a content creator is to film a video where I am not going to recommend the products or the company, and unfortunately today's video is, yeah, one of those. Now, this is not fun for me, like I said, I really don't like doing this, but I try to keep in mind that these companies reach out to me. These companies are asking for an honest review, and I make it very clear, doesn't matter the situation, the circumstances, anything, I will always be honest and real. The last thing I will ever compromise on is my integrity. And as you saw in the thumbnail and on the title, today I will be featuring the company known as Bucking Beards. I'm going to tell you throughout the video why I do not recommend any of these products just simply from my experiences alone. Now, I do want to be fair and go through all the important information about the company first and then kind of go from there. I don't have a script. I'm not reading anything. I never do. I'm just going to kind of give you guys an open window into what I have experienced over the last several months. So first, this company is out of Illinois. Their CEO is named Eric, and he is a pharmacy student. Respect that. That is fantastic. Even cooler, he has two doctors that are on staff. I've never seen that from a beard company, so I thought that was really unique. Okay. Now let's talk about their products. Let's talk about some prices and stuff like that. First off, if I were to give them my traditional one, two, or three dollar sign price rating, they would firmly be in a three dollar sign price rating. They are expensive compared to the small batch companies that we know and love and see on a regular basis. Now they have two different options for their products. They have their regular line and their hemp line. Now the regular beard oil goes for $23 for one ounce pretty expensive. Their hemp oil is going to go for $25 for one ounce. Now I've seen those prices before with other companies, right? And it's kind of that idea of you get what you pay for. It's really up to your comfort level, but let's see if that price matches the results. Now, one thing to start with uh, a positive is I do like the labeling and packaging here. One thing that I strongly dislike, and you guys know that if you're a fan of this channel, is I do not like pump tops. So they do have pump tops on here, but I do like the glass bottles, especially the hemp bottle, because it is a little bit see-through. I can tell the level of my oil when looking at that. I really value that. The regular oil is painted black, and you guys know I would love to have a little line on the side to see where the level is. You can tell sometimes by shaking it, but not always. One thing that is kind of cool though is they have this little top, and it like goes on real like lightly and kind of feels like futuristic. So I give their labeling and packaging an A plus because it's something that I've not seen before. But that's really where the A pluses stop for me. Now the oils smell different. The beard oil, I absolutely despise. The only thing that I get out of this scent is a sandalwood. I get some of the earthiness, I get some of the carriers, but I cannot stand sandalwood. You guys know that is on my absolute no-no list. That is a personal preference thing for me. A lot of other people that have tried this said they don't smell sandalwood. I'm like a hound. I don't know what it is. It's a curse, but I just get sandalwood out of it, and oh, I cannot do it at all. I really, really, really dislike the, the scent to the point where I have to wash my hands after putting some of the oil on my hands. Now, the hemp seed oil, I don't get any of that. I just get that natural nutty smell in there. So my experiences with these oils were not good. Uh, I did not like the way it felt in my beard. After a couple of hours, my skin was itching. My skin felt dry. My beard just did not seem to take well to these products. It's a really interesting feel because it's kind of lighter, but never felt like it really did its job. Uh, it's hard to explain. I did not like using them. I had to resort to using them only on lazy dates where I was not teaching that day and I was not filming, which is rare for me. Luckily, I've had these products for quite a while now. And uh, yeah, it just, they didn't work. Neither of these oils were anything that I would even give away to a friend. This will be going in a pile that I will not be passing on to somebody after this review. Okay, those are the oils. But I will say with the oils, there's no ingredients that really stand out to me as being bad. There's no ingredients that are really foreign to me. On paper, it looks like a solid list of ingredients. We have two other types of products now. We have their balms and their beard cream. Both of these have also the regular line and the hemp line, right? You have the beard cream, which is four ounces, come in these glass containers. You got the hemp with the green glass again, and then the regular line is the painted one. That's not as, as big of a deal because you can just, oh, got the little top thing in there, because you can just simply open it up and you can know where the line is, right? You can kind of go through there. And they fill these boys up. This may look like it is a, a full jar, but I have used this twice. Now, all of these products I did make sure to use twice. I want to try it out, not just go through one day. Uh, and 
again, it was not a lot of fun to me. You can see the color difference here with the hemp as compared to the normal line. And then we also have the balms, which are in your traditional tins. Same kind of deal here. I've used these each twice, and I'm going to kind of explain them. But the first thing that I want to say about both of these products, the cream and the balm, there are ingredients on here that I am not familiar with enough to be able to talk about in a factual way. I only talk about two things on this channel that are protected in the court of law, and that would be my personal opinion and facts. I do not have enough facts to talk about these ingredients, but I can talk about my personal experience, my personal opinion on how they work for me. Now, the cream was one of the worst products I've ever put in my beard. Now, it's said online, and I think this was altered after some people had tried it on early and gave them some feedback to say that it's more like a leave-in conditioner. For me, when I wear a good leave-in conditioner, I take a shower at night, I don't put any oil in, I put it in beard, then when I wake up in the morning, it's essentially gone. It's done its job, it's absorbed in, it's got this real deep nourishment. I did not get that from the hemp version or the regular version. It never absorbed in whatsoever. It felt like, for me, like you're putting on Vaseline on your beard and on your skin. Uh, the scent was kind of this naturalness, so I didn't mind it that much, but it wasn't enjoyable. It wasn't something that I was looking forward to, and again, I would never use that again. Now, the balms are interesting, again, because they have ingredients in there that I'm not extremely used to or I'm not extremely familiar with, and researching can only get you so far to be able to talk in a factual way, right? I would like to have more hands-on experience with these ingredients to talk any deeper about this, but I will just say these balms did not work for me. I will say that they are different. The regular balm is more of a creamy consistency, as compared to the hemp balm, which has a little bit of grit. Now, I don't know if that's from the ingredients. I don't know if that's because of a cooling process that was different or they were different batches, but the regular balm seemed more like a really full-bodied butter. It was smooth, but it just never did its job. To me, balm is part nourishment and part styling. I did not really get any styling out of it, and I did not really get any nourishment out of it. And then the hemp balm was even worse. So these were a strong pass for me. I did not enjoy them. They did not work for my beard at all. That's not to say that it won't work for someone out there, right? Some people say the most overused term is every beard is different, but I firmly believe that. I have people that I know, love, and trust that use products that I do not like at all, and they really use them. They really love them. That is okay. Everybody's beard is different. These ones, not in the slightest. Would I ever recommend them? Would I ever give them to a friend? Would I ever use them myself again? They just did not work for me, okay? But it take two seconds, I'm going to come back to you guys, wrap it up for a conclusion. My goal of today's video was to be open, transparent, but not bash anyone. All of my experiences with this company have been very professional and very cordial. I don't think that they're in some scam to get rich quick or make a buck off you guys in a cheap and bad way. They just have a different view on beard products than I do personally. And that's all I can speak to is my personal experience and my personal opinions. So question to leave you guys with, I would really value if anybody has tried their products. I've seen different people talk about them, post about them. I would love to hear your experiences, whether it is similar to mine, whether it's the best product you've ever had, or maybe somewhere in between. I always appreciate that because I think it gives people a larger sample size. And if you're considering buying something, Thing, more opinions are better than less. I don't care what it is or who it is, you should want to hear from more people. You don't have to listen to all of them, but it's good to bring that data in. When you have more data, you have more decisions to be able to be made. All right, guys, thank you for watching today. My name is Dan C. Bearded. Stay bearded and stay positive.